This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. God has given us another day that we can gather via technology. It's the first Sunday in May. And on first Sundays, we generally celebrate communion. And we're going to do that at this service. Part of the injunction in celebrating communion from Paul's letter to the Corinthians is that we Take time to examine ourselves before we come to the table. We may not see it as a blessing, but this pandemic has given us an opportunity to examine ourselves. Examination usually means that you have to step back, take a look, slow down. And this pandemic has, slowed, has, has made us all slow down our lives. We can examine ourselves, we have the opportunity to examine ourselves and to examine ourselves as a nation. I say uh, the opportunity to examine ourselves. We all do not do so. Yeah. And sometimes our exam is really very cursory. But the time that we have spent more and more time uh, locked in, shut down, uh, unable to uh, move about with all the distractions of life, uh, it has given us this opportunity and forced us to re-examine ourselves uh, beyond just a cursory exam. One of the things that has happened is it has given all parents a new respect for teachers. Uh, I even heard a 16-year-old say that he never appreciated school until he could not go. <laughs> well, it's not just parents, it's not just students, it's uh, us as the church, as institution. It's caused us to, like others, examine ourselves and the way we do what we do. It's caused us to ask the question, because we cannot gather as we usually do on Sunday morning, what is the church really about? What is it that we really believe? What is our faith really anchored in? Gathering for service or is it really anchored in Jesus? You know, sometimes that question, especially about what our faith is anchored in, we don't really know until the circumstances change situation change, or to put it another way, life happens, and some of the claims that we make in a, in a moment of enthusiasm, those claims fall away quickly. One of the great claims of this country is that it is a Christian nation. Well, not quite so. It's even worse than that. One of the cores of our faith has lost its relevance. I've been observing and, and looking at just uh, not only the, the church, but the nation as a whole. And one of the cores of our faith has loosened its, its grips on our hearts. Let me read you part of Paul's letter to the Roman church. It's from the fifth chapter. Beginning verse 1, reading through verse 5. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast 
in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. Boast in our hope. That makes sense. But boast in our suffering. Paul says we boast about our suffering. Now, suffering is not highly valued in our society. In fact, we spend a great deal of time to avoid suffering. One scholar says we look either to technology to solve it or lawyers to apportion blame. But nobody wants to own suffering, discomfort. In this pandemic, this coronavirus, we've forgotten about the opioid epidemic. And interesting enough, that opioid epidemic started in the Bible Belt. And as it went on, as people uh, found their lives being torn apart, uh, we began to notice the data said that suicide among white middle-aged males in the Bible Belt increased significantly. We don't take discomfort very well. We don't take suffering. We don't take disappointment very well. Uh, there, before the opioid epidemic, there was a heroin ep epidemic. And it started on Wall Street. Here we are, this highly developed nation, this, all this technology and all this wealth, and, 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 and yet we are not able to cope with some of the vicissitudes of life. Paul says that one of our core values, Christian values, is suffering. In the uh, book of Galatians, the letter to the Galatians, one of the gifts of the Spirit, if you read the King James Version, it says long-suffering is a gift of the Spirit, meaning patience and perseverance. The reality is in our lives in this 21st century and for quite a while, we do not like discomfort. We hate suffering, but it is a core value of our faith. Well, uh, why do we have to go for through this discomfort, this suffering? Why do we have to uh, be inconvenienced? And uh, why do we have to be stretched like this? Breaking news. We're not in heaven yet. There is imperfection here, so if there's imperfection, there will be suffering. Evil is real, and so if evil is present, there will be suffering. Suffering is part of the process that leads to life. It's not an end in itself, but it's part of the process that uh, we have to go through to uh, experience the abundance of life. Athletes. We look at uh, our sporting events, they have been curtailed, but athletes, they go through a tremendous amount of pain when they're training. In fact, most don't like to train. They have to stretch themselves. They have to push themselves. They have, there's, there's a lot of discomfort. They have to wall themselves off. And they do it all for a prize, a trophy, a championship. Professional athletes, yes, they get well paid. But, but if you talk to them, you'll find out they are in it for the prize. In order to be a good athlete, you have to go through a lot of discomfort, suffering, and pain. And that's why uh, we have fans. Uh, it's, it's a lot easier to look on than it is to participate. Because to, to participate is to stretch yourself. To participate means you have to delay your gratification. Let me put it in theological terms. Uh, in order to participate, you must deny yourself. Jesus says, if anyone it's going to be one of my disciples. You must deny yourself daily and pick up your cross and follow me. 
really, when we rebel at the thought of delaying, denying, uh, putting ourselves through personal discomfort, we're really just kind of wimping out. Look at our society today. Now, we have been locked in, and people are not only getting anxious, they're get, beginning to protest. And as Americans, we, we, we tout our rights. We have individual rights. But lost in that is that the sense of a greater good. What we're experiencing now is really just a little sacrifice, a little discomfort. But what begins to, what, 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 what we practice as Christians, the core value of our faith is that this ability to deny ourselves, to stretch ourselves, to go through is the basis of love that hopes all things, believes all things, that, that love that runs from heart to heart, that love that, that supersedes even the momentary pains of life. See, we get it mixed up too easily. Love and suffering. Love and jealousy mixed up with love and suffering. Because you make me feel the pain of je jealousy, I will make you suffer. That's not love. Love is, I will take your pain upon myself. That's what Jesus did. When we say Jesus talks about love, it's not only just the talk, it's the act. I will lay down my life for you. I will take your discomfort. I will suffer so that you do not have to. That's the core. That's why suffering is the core of our faith. He suffered on our behalf. And we, are, we often have to be reminded of this. That's why we regularly come to the table. Because when we come to the table, he says, do this in remembrance of me. Remember his suffering, his broken body. You remember that, that, that suffering to the point that he shed his own blood. I lay myself down. The crucifixion was not quick. It was agony. And he of himself did not want to go through that. He said, he prayed three times to his father, if, if it's possible, let this cup pass, but nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Part of the collection of songs and poems, part of the testimony is that Jesus had the opportunity to come down from the cross to end the suffering, but he decided to die so that we might have life, so that we not, would not have to go through what he went through on our behalf. That whole sense we need to revisit that whole sense needs to be part of our being as we come to the table and, and remember what it really took. Alas, and did my Savior bleed, and did my Sovereign die, would he devote that sacred head for such a one as I? At the cross, at the cross, I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight. And now I'm happy all the day. Was it for crimes that I have done he groaned upon the tree? Amazing pity, grace unknown, and love beyond degree. At the cross, it's only at the cross when we see the suffering of Jesus that we understand the depth of God's love for us. And it's only at the cross that we can be really begin to live life and to take on that same mantle, to pick up our cross and deny ourselves so that others, our loved ones, 
our friends, and even our enemies might be changed and find life abundantly. At the cross, at the cross, I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith. I received my sight and now that I've gone through, now that I see it clearly, now that I've come through the valley, I'm happy all the day. Let us pray. Most gracious God, we are at a time when we're experiencing some discomfort. We tend to focus on ourselves, but give us a greater vision. Take us to the cross where we see what real suffering is about and real love is about. So that in this time when we feel and get anxious and feel the uh, the call to deny ourselves and think beyond ourselves so that at this time when we see the cross we'll, it'll open up our hearts so that those who are lost in this darkness and searching and trying to find meaning will see that there's a God who will bring you through but a God of love and life in the name of Jesus we pray Amen come to the Lord's table by his invitation. On this first Sunday in May, as we come, I want you to keep in mind the, that we do this in remembrance of him, that whole sacrifice, the agony in the Garden of Gethsemane, the trumped up trial, the torture, his agony on the cross that he did for us taking our pain that we might have life. In the Gospels, it's recorded that on the night that he was betrayed, he sat with his disciples, telling them he longed to, to be there with them. He took bread, gave thanks, broke it and passed it to them, begged them to eat of it. Then, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, passed it to them, and bid them drink of it. As we, united in, by technology, gather together in one virtual table, let us go to the Lord in prayer. God of grace and glory, mercy everlasting, we come to you with bowed heads and humble hearts grateful that you have seen fit to give us this invitation to your table. We come with these elements and these elements are earthly elements. We ask your blessings upon them to change them from earthly to spiritual. Bless that which represents that your broken body and that rep which represents your shed blood. 
that as we partake it might feed our spirits so that during these circumstances we might feel the, your presence and that we might be witnesses, testimony of your great love and care and experience life abundantly. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. We are bidden and guided by scripture which says to do this together. Remembering that body that was broken for you, eat ye all of it. In the name of the Father, the name of the Son, the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And after supper, he took the cup. And remembering his shed blood, it shows the depth of his sacrifice, forgiving us of all of our sins. Drink ye all of it. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's recorded in Matthew's Gospel that after they had taken up the bread and the cup, they had no benediction, but they sang a hymn, and then they went out. We're not gathered physically together. We do ask you to think about that hymn at the cross, at the cross. I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight. Now I am happy all the day as we go from this virtual place and we go into this week. By the, may the God of grace and peace and love be with you. May his blessings shine through your life and bless others. In the name of Jesus, amen. We're so glad you joined us this Sunday morning on our YouTube channel. And we ask simply that you will subscribe to our channel. It's very easy, just click on the red subscribe button below and then click on the bell. Uh, this will notify you when we post new videos. We'd love to have you also join us on Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. for Bible study. Instructions are on our website, www.floridaavenue.org. Florida Avenue is one word, .org. For the next three weeks, we will be studying Hearing the Voice of God. And we'll begin our focus on the 10th chapter of the Gospel of John and the 21st chapter of the Gospel of John. Uh, thank you. God bless you. We pray that you will have a very, very blessed week.